So right now I am, uh, see so you hear the record? Yeah, what happened? Your car, what? Mexican authorities, car? <laughs> we got a, a, got a car seized by the Mexican authorities, you know, for no reason. Um, immediately reported it to, and we were, so the, the young lady I was traveling with was, was going across the border to gain political asylum for her, um, uh, for her family from Russia. Um, and anyway, the Mexican authorities impounded the car, like for no reason, ended up writing that we were in the, uh, that she was in the wrong lane, right? We immediately reported it to this company and the company said, okay, we'll pick up the car today. Right. And then it never did. So we called them and, and said, Hey, like what's going on. And, um, and, uh, cause you, know, you had, you had a rental car in Mexico when it happened. We had a rental car in Los Angeles, got wow. Mexican insurance to go down to Mexico. Got it. And then the Mexican authorities were like, Oh my God, like the amount the the amount of corruption that's going on there is like pure insanity. The car company said that they take care of it. And um, and then we called back and said, why didn't you pick it up? And then we got some crazy supervisor that said, yeah, we'll pick it. We'll pick it up whenever we get around to it. I was like, excuse me. Are you fucking kidding me? So I immediately called Capital One and said, these people are going to rob, you know, so you need to kind of shut them down and not allow them to charge my credit card and they said well they haven't charged anything yet and i was like they're going to yeah two months later i get banged for six thousand seven hundred eight hundred bucks on my card and i've been fighting to like oh. crazy with capital one send an email to this company fox rent a car right i'm gonna go on a facebook and instagram live yeah and just hang out all day and talk about again like in order to establish trust with a company, I think that that transparency cadence is, cadence is so important. And, and and so people, investors and consumers need to know exactly what's happening with these brands at all times. That's why I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for trust and transparency. CEOs that, that share trust and transparency of everything that's going on with the company, good, bad, or indifferent. And with cadence, um, I mean, it's being consistent, right? Being regular and consistent because it's the consistency too that builds the trust. Ex exactly. Uh, that, once, that's we ha once we have a customer's trust, like we need to be consistent to maintain it because it can also go away with one bad experience. It can go away just like that. Years of building a relationship. A thousand percent. And I'll take it to another level. So this is the most important because people can sit, put it, whatever, a quote unquote newsletter out every month and oh, here's, you know, whatever. And if they're not hold to accountability, then it's all bullshit, right? right. So our investor relations firm holds us to task. Mm -hmm. So if we say our expectations of this quarter is A, B, C, and D, in our quarterly report, if we didn't hit the, the expectations, we get a failing grade. Mm -hmm. Who are you working with? Who's the firm? Angel Span. Okay. Okay. So in a quarterly tear sheet that exists, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like in a quarterly tear sheet, we get analyzed for our performance, right? So, so we have, I'm going to show you this. So I'm going to share my screen. And is you're, you're in the middle of a fundraise, right? For the app. And Correct. it's all public and transparent. Like if people want to go to it, where will they go? Go to wefunder.com slash lucid. Okay. And they're gonna get they're gonna get hang on. Let me show you what they're gonna get. If you go right now, this is what you're gonna get. Nice. At 67 investors, mm -hmm. seven hundred and sixty-nine thousand dollars. Everything about the company, every single penny that we're spending, mm -hmm. right? Here. Hang on. That's a pretty high average contribution, right? Two, three, what is that? Yeah, well, we're getting a lot of 20,000, 50,000, well, 20,000. Yeah, almost 11,500. Yeah. On average. Yeah, we're getting a lot of 20,000s. 
twenty five thousands, okay. probably maybe we maybe five or six fifty thousands. So is that it, purchase for equity? It's a safe. So it's a safe doc, which is a, a simple agreement for future equity. And yeah, like we're raising on a safe right now as well. Yeah. So we're doing it on a safe. Like every single dollar of how we're spending our money is in, you know, is in our plan, our user acquisitions, everything, dollar nice. for dollar. Right. So, but then also I'll take you into this. Like this is a quarterly tear sheet that Angel Span produces for us, saying how we're where we are hitting our KPIs. Right, what our transparency tell is, right? Um, full analysis of you know lucid, and then we so we have documentation of whether or not what we're saying is being executed, uh -huh. right? So does Angel Span? What's what's the fee structure with them? Is it a, a flat fee or a percentage? Monthly, rate? monthly, flat. So every, every month they charge, you know. X amount of dollars that comes out of the account um, for them to have an active investment relations kind of communication cadence happening. And we use their back end. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 So is it, would you say it's a full-time job right now doing this raise? Yeah. And the, the challenge is that I normally spend I, 15 hours a day non-investment. So now I've been pushing myself on, on like, it's been pure insanity because sometimes like 15 hours and 15 hours is 30, but there's only 24 hours in a day. So where do you find that? <laughs> but we're optimistic. We're entrepreneurs and we're sober. <laughs> I will tell you something though, since we're recording this. So I came out with a post a couple of days ago, which you commented on about mm -hmm. how we hurt our loved ones in addiction. Mm -hmm. right and you know and i was i was talking to actually a, a a lucid advertiser um yesterday um and uh you know i was talking about how the importance of leaning in even like even when, like when you get bad comments how you need to like lead in unless you get comments like oh go ahead and drink you guys are a bunch of idiots go drink like those we get rid of have to clear that <laughs> like that like that's just yeah. haters right yeah that are hating the fact that we're leaning into life, right? So I, I can't, I can't have any kind of creative discussion on that. Um, so, um, so you saw the thing that I posted how we how we hurt others, but you know, like, but how we're able to make things whole and. So well, it was the, it was the mom you had run into a mom who had lost her son, right, to addiction. Well, that was even that was a couple of days ago, yeah. but this was a person that was making comments saying like what are you crazy you're you're using that as a scapegoat okay. um alcoholism it, you'll see it in the comments i just don't want to mention her you know name or whatever she was like everybody all, all the people i've been hurt so much and it's your fault it's all your fault i don't i'm not looking at a lean in i'm not looking at lean in at all you guys are bad like you guys are what did she say um it's your choice mm -hmm. it's a choice i said no it's not it's not, it's not a choice. Right. And she's like, yes, it is. She was like, and, you know, and I feel very empathetic and I, I feel horrific that of, of, you know, of the, the shit that we put three people through, mm -hmm. but people need to, to know that, that they can not only can they get better, but they can repair relationships. And so what's happening is this shame that's happening. And I understand mm -hmm. that she's, that her heart's been been shattered and i and i and while i can never identify with that because i'm not the family member of an alcoholic or addict i am an alcoholic i am an addict i'm a recovered one for today right um i said listen i'm so sorry i'm so sorry but we can't hit this shame and guilt with people we can't say it's a choice because what you're saying is dangerous mm -hmm. Because if you're saying that it's a choice and people have the ability to stop if they just have given their own willpower, an alcoholic cannot do that. So if you tell an alcoholic they could just control their drinking, that's not true. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I look, I'm a Libra. So I'm like the balance. And no, I'm always, have, I'm like, have these discussions. 
Yeah, I always try to see both sides. And as someone who I grew up in addiction, it runs in my family. I also am in recovery. Um, I've I've dabbled in Al Anon. So I see <laughs> it's a funny experience. Have you ever been in yes. an Al Anon meeting and you go in? I'm like, you're all talking about me. This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, at the same time, I'm like, you know, part of the the beauty of making living amends and even verbal amends, like when I first went through my four step and I walked sponsees through it, I always say, look, this is this is it's not about saying I'm sorry. It's about recognizing the harms that I did when I was in active addiction. Mm -hmm. And and then I always say make sure you ask them, is there anything I'm missing? And in that moment, hundred percent right. In that moment, you have, you got to sit back and just listen and take it. So like, even if I don't agree with what they're saying, I'm not allowed in, in my opinion, I'm not allowed to, you're a hundred percent right. And then after yeah. that, I just listen. And I'm like, even if I have someone in my life who's saying, you know what, you, 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 like you could have done this, you could have chosen, da, 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 da. you know what? They're completely justified. And that's why I said, she's totally- I right don't have to agree. And I don't agree, but it's like, I also believe we are always at the moment of choice. Like mm -hmm. when we're in active addiction, unfortunately, like often that choice is removed because mm -hmm. we're in the heat of it. We're in the heat of it, but there are choices we can make along the way. We can choose- to go to a meeting we can choose to pick up right but like we can't two. control and right. make a choice to stop you know being once you pick up once you pick up it game over right the choice it, is gone and that's where the powerlessness comes in with the disease and that is where and so to be clear you're 100 percent right so in the amends process if you look at it on a 12-step level mm -hmm. It's not apologizing. That's not the meat on the bone. It's what can I do to make it right? And then you turn the floor to them. Now, if they say, listen, I don't accept it. You're a piece of shit and I hope you die. Okay. Not they only get is, to say that. They're and angry. It's their, and it's their right. Yeah. It's 100% their right. Okay. But what I'm saying is that when you have people in their active addiction, a perfect example is one of my sobriety dates is this, right? August 2nd, 2004. It's okay. lots of Chinese, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I had a friend, non-alcoholic, like this lady, who just said, you know, just control your drinking. Just, just say no. <laughs> I can say no, and you can't. So yeah. just control your drinking and make the choice not to drink. I don't have a choice not to drink. I have a choice whether or not I want to go to a meeting, but I don't know what a meeting's about. So, so happening in social media, there's this stigmas of addiction yeah. that's just ravaging the community because they say, don't say the word alcoholic, you know, like don't say it's a disease ever. It's not, it's your choice. It's just willpower. And, you know, and I, and she says, I'm not going to lean into the conversation. Well, if we don't lean into the conversation, millions more people will die. So it's yeah. not about her specifically. It's about all the people who cho choose not to lean into, uh, um, you know, the un trying to understand the challenges that exist, right? And trying and not pushing. Like I always say, the worst thing that ever happens is a non-alcoholic giving advice to a non-alcoholic or a non-addict giving advice to an addict. It kept me out for 10 years. My yeah. friend said, just control your drinking, bro control the amount of lines of cocaine you do. Don't be an idiot. I said, oh, okay, I won't be an idiot. And then I woke up every morning and it, it, every, whenever I came to in a hospital in a jail cell and a blackout and my I bruises all over my body. And I was like, I was trying not to be an idiot. What happened? But nobody understands unless they're an alcoholic or an addict, that phenomenon of craving as they talk about in 12-step prog uh, programs that, that, you know, one is too many and a thousand is never enough. There's no such thing as an off switch for me. Right, right, right. If there was, I'd just continue to drink. I'd have a couple drinks a day. Yeah, and that and that's why I think in our last call, we talked about some of these drinks that are coming up that are 
you know, replicating like the spirit of free spirits and replicating the flavor of the alcohol without the alcohol and how like personally, you know, I, I'm not going to play with that. Like that's the extreme. Like I take the disease to the point where one drink means to die for me in my world. That's how extreme it needs to be in my mind. And I'm not going to play around with things that could mess with my mind. Um, you know, it's, I take it exactly bad. as you, I was speaking to someone the other day, you know, who relapsed and, and I was like, you know, and they were talking about being lonely over the holidays, you know, and all this stuff. And I said, I was lonely on the holidays. I said, the only, I was alone this, this holiday, right? I was just working. I was at my desk working. I'm a lunatic. Right. <laughs> and I was like, but there's, so sometimes I'm not emotionally sober, but right. there's one reason why I won't pick up a drink or a drug. Because I know exactly to your point, I know 1000% that I'm a dead man if I do. So I might as well just walk to the grave site, you know, scoop up a, some dirt, lie down, hang out and wait. Yeah. And, and, and the better our life gets, the more we have to lose. And it's just not even worth, it's not even worth messing around with. That's why I've even... I mean, I look at other, I, I hear you about the emotional sobriety. That's another level. And there's other like behaviors in my life I've, I've worked on over the past, you know, whatever, 16 years since I got sober. And, and to me, it's like, even what I choose to eat now or how I choose to like move my body or like, if I'm having back discomfort, like for me, like doing Pilates or yoga, like that's even part of my recovery because I don't want to find myself in so much like physical pain that I'm looking for some kind of escape. So it's like everything I do, is this going to take me one step closer to recovery or one step closer to a drink? That's kind of how I think of it. And it's at this point in my, my life, it's all preventative, like, like any disease, like I'm doing this to prevent this, to prevent this. And you know, when someone has a relapse or a slip, like we always ask them like, like, when did this actually start? Because it didn't happen when someone picked up a drink. It happened like way before that. What the, re the, the relapse, the, the relapse precedes the relapse, you know, like the, the, and, you know, I heard this once in, in a, by, from a speaker or, or somewhere. And they said, just be super clear that you relapsed when you were 100% sober. Yeah. And when I mentioned that to people, okay. It, what's that dry anyway or dry yes thank you and they're like I'm like think about that and when I say that I mean it's so simple and it's kind of idiotic how simple that is mm -hmm. but when I mentioned that the same time that whoever was that mentioned to me I was like mm. Mm -hmm. so and what I've seen is a very clear pattern of what happens and you know yeah. there's 12 step versus non 12 step and there's this craziness happening there it happens all the time on lucid right mm -hmm. um but you start dialing back on your recovery, whatever that recovery looks like. For yes. 12 step, it's meetings, it's service, it's working in the steps. You start and living in the steps. That's what people don't get, the living in the steps part. It's not like, oh, I did my steps nine years ago. Or so I went to a meeting and then I was an asshole on the street. Yes. It's, yeah. Exactly. Um, so... Um, so yeah, I'm with you 100%. Yeah, looking back, the relapse prevention though is so important. And it's like, um, I think a lot of what I've seen is it sometimes happens when someone feels like a victim or they get really lonely, um, stop reaching out or like, you know, that sense of, um, I don't know, even in recovery, I can feel this is like being in a crowd and a lot of people and still feeling lonely, that sense of like, inner isolation i think is one of the most dangerous signs that someone could be getting close to a relapse and that's where the community piece comes in and that's where you know i think we're both building different communities that are aligned um on these different platforms or through products or you know whatever we're messaging and so real brief like how is lucid building a community and how can people tap in and how is it helping people yeah, I mean, so we have over 150,000 members um, and uh, 
I mean, it's what we do is incredibly simple, meaning, I mean, it took a, a lot, you know, to build, but it's one addict helping another, like period, end of sentence. If you strip everything away, it's one addict helping another, right? But, um, and so we provide a platform for that to happen. Now, what we do is me being, me, me being the person who Lucid is for. Now, even though we're all inclusive of anyone who chooses to live a sober life, the majority of people, vast majority of people that enter a sober platform, it's not that they choose to be, I mean, it's not that they choose to be sober and they've never had an issue. That's probably 1% of our segment. 99% of people are people that are, have had challenges and they need to connect with others, you know? Um, and so we, we do a very good job on both uh, creating very clean UGC, user generated content, and then cons consumption of content, which is the other side, which is where you could, like you mentioned Ruby from Sober Curious Movement, where you, you could play 50 hours of content from various recovery advocates, trauma therapists, uh, CEOs of treatment centers, sober celebrities, authors, sober, sober authors, people who have lost their their loved ones to addiction. And we have conversations about alcoholism, addiction. It's a, like a fireside chat. We now do videos about that. Um, Soberlink is 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 now involved with that. They're the number one remote alcohol monitoring company in the world. We're having discussions about how they're rebuilding trust with their loved ones. We have daily gratitude where people post what they're grateful for all day. We have sobriety trackers where people can set their sober date. And then when, when it hits certain milestones, they get like this big explosion of confetti and then they can share it in the feet. So like we make, so there's two parts of, to me, it's going to make people sober number and keep people sober. Number one, help those people who are struggling and don't understand. But number two, show them how fucking cool it is to be sober, right? Yes. Because the sober dating, people think, oh, wow, that's a shiny object that you guys have. And it's amazing. And why didn't you think of that? Why didn't I think of that? Right. But it's like, if you look at it purely from a social impact standpoint, right, which people use as a word just to say that they're cool. And then they look at your market. Your your market is a $1,254 billion um, uh, market size uh, by the end of next year. That's what they project. Uh, addiction treatment is $42 billion. It's now a little more, right? So they look at that market size and say, how, how can I make money off a bunch of addicts? Like a lot of them do, sadly. So from the social impact standpoint, the woman, for in my case, the woman would always say, oh my God, you don't drink. How are we going to have any fun? Oh my God, why don't you just have one drink? Come on, just one. Now me, my entire life is recovery. My business is recovery. We have 150,000 people in 300,000 sessions per month of people logging in. If suddenly, if I dropped off, be a fucking problem, Right. And I'm not saying that from an ego standpoint. I'm saying it as I'm the speaker for, I'm that mouthpiece for Lucid, right? Yes, and, yes. And, and and so in many regards- it's Lucid, not an option. Lucid keeps me sober, right? Yeah. Um, service keeps you sober. And for that reason, Lucid keeps you sober. So, um, so people need a safe place to interact. So people are like, oh, no dating for the first you know, year, right? Like there's that thing. That's right? what AA, that's what the 12 step program tells us. Yeah. 12 step program doesn't tell us, but it came from meetings. It's nowhere in the big book. Nowhere in the nowhere big book. Nowhere okay. in the big book. Okay. Somebody at a meeting 30 years ago at some point said that. Now, if you look at it on its face, because I, I, I'm a big advocate for that in theory, right? Focus on nothing but your sobriety for the first year. Okay. But the amount of people that I've told. Okay. No, I know, I know people who have, and they've been so glad, so glad they did. But I know it's not like, it could be a suggestion. It could be a guideline, but it's not one size fits all. Like it's important for some people, especially like, I know a lot of women, like we have, you know, sexual trauma in our background mm -hmm. and need to get that outside help and the therapy that goes along with- A hundred percent. What and I'm so saying- what I'm saying, all I'm saying is very clearly is if you're going to date, yeah. date in a safe and contained yeah. environment. That's yeah, all yeah. I'm saying. For I'm sure. a big advocate for focusing on your sobriety, right? 
And for those people who can stay away for a year, that's great. But if they're going to date, it's not that, it's not that lucid dating is pushing them to date right. because they'll go on Hinge or Bumble or Tinder or eHarmony or Match or Zeus or, yes. I mean, plenty of fish. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I was there, um, I don't know, like 10 years ago, definitely like spent a year with, you know, I was a few years sober. Right. Um, but yeah, I agree. Like if, if you're going to date, um, there's ways to, to do it in a way that's going to support your recovery. And it certainly helps like to be meeting people who, who are sober as well, you know, or dry. I mean, um, I can't imagine, I can't imagine even, you know, I'm, I'm married now, but back then when I was dating in sobriety, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I didn't want to meet, I didn't want to meet someone at a meeting. Um, I didn't want to date anyone in AA, but then it was like, where am I going to meet people? And, you know, I thought, well, maybe I could, I, I was like, maybe I could date like a, a quote unquote normal drinker, like if they could take it or leave it. But no, I can't, I came to find out, like, I don't want to be in someone's house. I don't want alcohol in the house. Um, I have a few friends who drink occasionally if we're out to dinner, but we're not bringing it into the house. I, I wouldn't want to like, yeah. I don't like the smell of it. I don't like, you know, I was at an event the other night and talking to someone and they had a glass of red wine in their hand and it was so strong that smell it was like they say in the big book like what's page 86 or 7 it's like you recoil from recoil the... like a hot flame I did I was like it wasn't tempting I was just like ooh, like the smell was just it was like cheap nasty red wine I was just like Ugh. yeah that's that's I think bottom of page 86 top of 87 it's you know and and this is why like kind of going back on onto the dating thing um the people that i know who've been pressured have caved in because oh yeah the woman or the man or however they identify says why don't you just just try one we yeah. can't have any fun and finally they say you know what yeah all right fuck it i'll what the hell is one drink and before you know it they're they they're out to the races and you never see them again I so what we want to do is while we want to make sure that if people want to focus on their sobriety, let them focus on their sobriety. But if they want to date, let them date with someone on the other side of the table that's not giving them that pressure and who share that same common bond. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, we want to make sure that there's, 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 there's that saying, there's amongst us, no explanation is necessary. Those not amongst us, no explanation is possible. So mm, yes. the person at the other side of the table, it's like, I, why can't you just have one? And they keep forcing yeah. and pushing you and poking you. That Especially if they've never seen you drunk and they don't know what it turns into. They have yeah. no conception of how bad it could yeah. be. Yeah. And so, but it plays into kind of back into your question about lucid. We got to show people how that they can enjoy their lives sober. And if they're single, they immediately equate that to the, the fact that they're gonna, never going to be able to date again. Mm -hmm. Like that's immediately where their mind goes. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't do this because I'm never going to meet someone. But like, no, 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 wait a second. Meet someone sober, right? Now, here's the thing. You mentioned something incredibly important that people don't understand. Meeting, dating someone from an, a 12-step meeting is not good in any way, shape or form because, because, you know, the, the you you get into it a, a problem with them and then you don't want to go to the meeting anymore meeting. and before you know it your you 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 your home group is no longer safe right so and then you avoid, yeah. then you avoid it yeah yeah something so how did you decide to turn away like some of the non-alc beverage companies that approached you like what are your thoughts around that now i i have i'll have calls with them i won't have follow-up calls with them uh, you know, if I think it, it doesn't make sense. So, um, like, I, I think I discussed this with you before, you know, and, and I don't know if these companies realize what they're doing. Um, and maybe it's, it, it's, it, here's what I'm saying. Non-alcoholic whiskey. Guess what my next drink is going to be. Yeah. Whiskey. Like, yeah, so it's not about it being non-alcoholic at that point, because if it mimics whiskey, guess what my next drink is going to be. Right. So like you get that whiskey taste in my mouth. Fuck it. It's over. Right. So then I'm immediately going to want that whiskey effect. Yes. So be like, did you ever smoke cigarettes? 
Yeah, I quit October 24th, 2001. Congratulations. That was a tough one. But yeah, I mean, I can't, like if someone offered me a cigarette that didn't have any negative health consequences, I think I'd have to pass. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, it's like it, one of my favorite speakers in 12-step programs said, if there was ever a cure for alcoholism through a pill, he's like, I wouldn't want it because I'd say, give me 30. Exactly. Like, but no, only one pill will kill you. Fine, give me 30. You remember you know? Anna's use? Yes. It, yes. It, it, yeah, I think they offered that to me like in rehab and what, it makes you throw up if you drink. <laughs> yeah. But that to the point, like it's not about the alcohol. It's about the stuff that's underneath that we get to work through in recovery. Thank and you. Alcohol that's what we're recovering from. We're not recovering from... I can't stop picking up this glass of alcohol. It's what's behind it. It's like my friend, Jerry Cooney, who's in the program, right? He, he, he was a, a he fought for the heavyweight championship of the world 30 years, 30 plus years ago against Larry Holmes, right? Um, and, um, you know, he always jokes uh, when he qualifies. He He's like, uh, uh, it's not that I like cocaine. It's just, I really like the smell of it. Right. And, <laughs> and it's like we don't we don't have a problem with alcohol or drugs. We don't. We have a problem with life. Mm -hmm. And we'll do anything we can to mask and run away from that pain. So if it's not alcohol, right? Okay, we got rid of alcohol. Okay, we'll do cocaine. Okay, cocaine. No, pills. Okay, no. All right, we cleaned up all that stuff. Okay, shop. Okay, no more shop. Okay, okay, no. <laughs> Whatever yeah. you name it. <laughs> so at the end of the day, and you're 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 you just brought up the key to the kingdom. It's about leaning into the pain, mm -hmm. identifying the pain. It's like I could tell you how I drank and how I drugged, but it wasn't until I figured out why I drank and why I drugged that I was able to get better. Now that happened to me in the 12 steps. If it happens somewhere else for another individual, as long as you get to the trauma. Mm -hmm. that's what's most important and you heal from the trauma because like in 12 step work um which i didn't want to do because i thought 12 steps were a cult right mm -hmm. um first who are you angry at why why are you angry at them column one and two what part of your 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 you know self is affected self-esteem pocketbook whatever right but number four column four is the most important thing part. yeah where's my part yeah so it's like that's the turnaround. Yeah, that's where that's it's, the healing. And that's where, you know, going back to the woman from LinkedIn, like, I think that's really helpful for people like that to know is we're not, we're not saying, hey, like, it's not my problem. We're, we're going through that process of like, where, what's, what's my part? I'm responsible. And then mm -hmm. taking responsibility for those actions. Yeah. Even though that there's hope on the other side for sure that's all i'm saying yeah you see like if we don't give people hope then we're fucked yeah yeah that's what i'm saying yeah and i think for someone maybe who is not sober yet or they're just getting started i mean that's why we take it like one step at a time just like building this business right if we looked at the whole it might feel overwhelming i mean when i first got sober and i I skipped ahead and I looked at step nine. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not, no. not step nine. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doing that. But I mean, if that could have kept me out, it could have kept me out if I just sat in fear about facing, you know, the people that I needed to make amends to. And well, I didn't they understand talk, they the talk about the, They talk about the one, two, three, step one, two, three, one, yeah. two, three, one, two, three. I always said exactly like you. I, I did the a la, carte, a la carte version of AA. I said, I'll do one, two, three, definitely not four, five, eight, and nine. Fuck that. <laughs> don't even, don't even bring that shit up. Right. But those are what's called the action steps of the program that take us out of our agony and mm -hmm. allow us to heal. Yet I didn't want to take the four, five, eight, and nine, the, those four steps that free you. And how much does it help being an entrepreneur and being sober with all that like personal inventory work that we get to do? During this fucking investment raise, are you kidding me? <laughs> if anybody sees as much suffering, yeah. you know, on a daily basis as me. Yeah. So it's like, you know, even a treatment center that has 500 beds don't, doesn't even come close to the amount of people that, that we see on a daily basis on the platform. So 
when I look at the lucid feeds and I see the people struggling on the level that they're struggling, I, I, uh, something needs to happen. And so people don't start to kind of engage in hard dialogue. Like, like when you were talking, I said something earlier about, about the choice thing and you, you started pushing up against it. I want you to push up against mm -hmm. shit. Like we need to have hard conversations. Then I realized what you're saying. Oh, we have a choice to go to a meeting. Got it. Right. But a non-alcoholic that says, hey, you just need to make the choice not to drink. Mm -mm. And to a, an alcoholic, they're like, oh, that's it. I just need, that just means no, I just need, you know, I don't have good choices. I'm a bad person. I right? think like I always have a snapshot. I, I, I have a snapshot in my mind of what my bottom look like for me. Like we all get to choose our own bottom. That That's another choice. Yeah. Uh, I don't, personally, I think, it's an elevator going down. We get to decide when we get off. Yep. Some people, you could argue, maybe they don't. But for me, I decided I could have gone lower. I decided my bottom, I'd had enough. And I was terrified of what would come next, like putting the drink down. But there does come a point where someone has to decide or someone will decide for them. This is your bottom. Because unless it gets to the death point, right? Because that's the ultimate bottom. So okay. it can always go lower. You, but... so you, you, you hit a very important topic because this is some, what you just talked about is something that's so hard because with people uh, like kids, if I'm dealing with kid, like a 21 year old kid and all of their friends are using and they still have their job and they still have their apartment or whatever, right? A lot of, and and so they haven't hit that bottom or even someone that's 40 or 50 and hasn't hit their bottom because they have still have the wife or the husband or, you know, the kids or the job or whatever it is. And it's like I was telling a friend the other day, um, I said, um, I said, listen, um, you still have all this stuff and you even have money in the bank. Right. So what I'm telling you right now is you need to see your bottom. You need to know that you're going to go there because if you think that you're going to be only, only going to be the only person in the history of the universe that's ever beat alcoholism, right. Then, you know, you have another thing coming to you. So you need to be very clear that, that you have all this stuff, but you need to be super clear that you're going to slowly lose it all or quickly one or the other. Right. And, but you, you're going to lose everything. Right. You say not yet. When someone's like, Oh, I haven't lost my job. Not yet. You're eligible I too. This. Not yet. Yeah. Why you see? You're eligible too, right? Yeah. So it's so you need to be super clear of that bottom. So right. I said, listen, if you want to lose everything, lose the girl, lose the house, lose the car, lose all the money, you lose your health, be on your deathbed, and then say, oh, I got it. And if you want to, yeah. If you want to do that, then that's your choice. Right. It, but right now you need to see that bottom. Mm -hmm. Right. So and and that and so that's why the word choice. Right. So as far as being able to control your drinking or decide not to drink, that choice is not ours. If you're a real alcoholic, that's the difference. That's the difference. So the choice in many regards makes sense. Choice to go to a meeting choice to work the 12 steps. But for people, non-alcoholics to say, you have a choice not to drink. You just need to decide not to drink. No, like that's why that just say no, that like Nancy Reagan came up with was so harmful. She meant well, she meant well. <laughs> well, just say no to the first is, that could work. Like yeah. just say no to the first time someone offers you a child, you know, it was for children. Yeah. Not to accept the offer. Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. But, but yeah. just say no doesn't work to in certain circles. Okay, I'm going to say no to the first one. Okay. But then from there, how does just say no? It's it, it, people think there's a quick shortcut mm -hmm. to not falling into the disease of alcoholism and addiction. I think one of the determinants could be I know we could talk about this all day, but when I'm working with someone who's like on the fence or they're in the gray and they're not ready to admit, one of the tests is really, okay, just try not to use or drink for whatever, how many days, 
-hmm. and let me know how it feels. And if you sense like the white knuckling, the tense, it's like really stressful, life feels unmanageable, like all those things, that's a sign, right? Because yeah. otherwise it would just be easy. It would be like- And, and, it, and it says that in the big book. It says, yeah. try some controlled drinking. Now the problem was, it's kind of like anything else. And some right? people can control, some alcoholics we can, but it's it it's it's horrible, right? It's miserable. Well, we can we can control, we can stop, but we can't stay stopped. So eventually, it blows up in our face. Mm -hmm. So I had the ability to stop for a while. Okay, I actually went as far as a year, two weeks, and five days. Mm -hmm. Right, I just couldn't stay stopped. It was killing me, killing me. Right, I was so dry, so dry. Right, I wasn't drinking but I was about to explode and I finally did, right? So you can, that's why they say it's not about stopping, it's about stay stopped. If you could, if you can't stay stopped, right? What's next for Lucid and how can we support the, the movement right now? Whether it's my company or anyone listening. Well, I told you, you know, you and I uh, will have a discussion, put and put it up in Lucid and put it in the new video section of Lucid. Yeah. Right? Um, because the the it goes back into leaning into into this discussion that it's not about giving up anything. It's about leaning into life. Mm -hmm. And um, so what's next for Lucid is we're just we're trying to kind of push harder conversations that people don't want to have, but it's the only way for us to get shit done. So we're going to continue to accelerate the community um, and and bring exposure to as many people in the community continue to have hard conversations. And then, you know, um, and any brand that we're working with, we're just going to have discussions that open people's eyes in to the fact that this has nothing to do with pulling away, but leaning in. And that's what people don't get. It's about facing life and not running away from it. Yeah. Facing everything and recovering is the acronym fear. Fear. Um, it's yep. hard. It's hard. And, and to be clear, I mean, it sounds like you have a really very holistic and comprehensive, like support mechanism on this platform, because a lot of people do need that outside help, like getting sober with the trauma and the stuff. So people have to pace themselves with what they're facing, right? We don't have to face everything all at once on day one, that would potentially be like, too overwhelming for the system because you know well, we were talking about shame in the beginning of the call and that's the most damaging thing ever like we already we come in with shame self-hatred guilt remorse all those yep. things like no one else is probably going to make us feel any worse than we're already making ourselves feel yep. so there's such a like unraveling of that that has to happen in order for someone to even feel worthy of recovery yeah. Right. Because a lot of people are just like, don't even feel worthy of living a good life as much as they may want it. Um, and that's, that can be hard to overcome initially. A hundred percent. Well, I thank you what you're doing and you know, it's, it, we, we got to push the conversation to, to all the stuff that you're doing as well. This is a one-sided conversation as far as I, I didn't speak about Sorella and all the wonderful, th th wonderful things you're doing. So maybe we can turn the mic on to you next time. Okay. Sounds good. Okay.